What's good everybody, I'm Keandre, this is Hoopin' Elect, and welcome back to the channel. Now you guys know what's going on by the title of the video. College basketball season is right around the corner. We just had the top two prospects go toe-to-toe -to -toe a few weeks ago. We've got leagues around the world um, starting up very soon, so it's only right that we drop a preseason big board for the 2023 NBA Draft. I'll say this now and probably a few more times throughout the video, but it's best to just take this as a very rough draft or a watch list going into the season because it's going to change a ton. But yeah, there's a lot to get to. I don't want to ramble on too long. There's some elite talent at the top of this draft, but it was also really hard to just narrow it down to 60 players that we're going to talk about in some sort of detail. But that's what we got to do. Otherwise, we'd be here all day. Be sure to leave a like. These are always really tough to put together, so help your boy out. And let's go ahead and get into it. I really like guys like Ricky Council at Arkansas, We've got Tucker DeFreeze, who is a sniper out of Drake. Um, I really wanted to have Nolan Hickman in there. Trey White is a freshman out of USC, who is a kind of sneaky prospect as a 6'7 guard. I think Zeke Mayo is in for a big year as the guy at South Dakota State. And as bigs go, you got F.A. Obogadi, Henry Vesar, and Mogi, who all should probably be in there already, but likely will be at some point. And then you have your familiar names like Terrence Shannon, Oscar Shibwe, Jaime Hawkins, Kevin McCullough, Drew Timmy. Uh, Isaiah Wong who are all still on the watch list and have impressed at points in the past so we'll see where they take their games as upperclassmen and I don't want to give the impression that I've just seen every single one of these players play meaningful basketball and can tell you everything that you need to know already especially with the international group but I just wanted to give a little insight into what I have going into these seasons whether I've come across these players in the past they've caught my eye in college or high school I've got them from some statistical searches or somebody tipped me to their game that's how they ended up here and the list is even bigger than what we showed. Getting into the top 60, Florida State's Matthew Cleveland is back after showing a lot of promise in year one. The big thing for him is progressing as a shooter and he's got a long way to go there, but if he can make strides, the 6'7 guy who can make an impact as a cutter, finisher, and defender should be considerably higher on this list. Usman and Dia is interesting as a 6'11 forward out of Senegal. I haven't been able to watch as much as I'd like on him just yet, but I'm definitely intrigued, especially by the way he shot the ball. But from what I've seen so far, I think he'll be a staple in draft convos. Mojave King was impressive in his matchups against the Metropolitans. As that smaller winger off guard at 6'5", he can knock down threes. He competes defensively and brings a sense of glue and reliability to the floor. If he can continue his production, he'll be a real draft candidate and another NBA Global Academy success story. A guy I think a lot of people are going to be fans of throughout the year is Om guard Juan Nunez. He's one of the most naturally gifted passers in the draft, and if you're looking for creativity, he's your guy. He's another one I want to watch some more of in the future, but I already like his game quite a bit from what I've seen. Pepperdine's Houston Millette put together a nice freshman season and showed off great upside as a creator and shooter at 6'5", especially down the stretch. He averaged 20 in his last 9 games, including giving Gonzaga and Santa Clara 25 and 24 respectively. I have a feeling we'll be talking about him often, and he'll make the West Coast Conference pretty interesting. Damian Collins had a lot of buzz coming in as a freshman, but it was pretty clear he wasn't there yet, especially physically. But being he's still one of the most athletic guys in college, what we saw from him this summer and his ability to impact both ends of the floor, I still think he's an NBA talent, and I'm excited to see what he shows this year. Kansas's Jalen Wilson played a big role in their national championship run, but he was also super impressive in the combines, and that's got him as a real draft candidate for me. At 6'8", he's got the size, he's shown high-level defense in the past. If he can step up and be the guy for Kansas more offensively, there's no way it doesn't pay off for him next June. Transferring from LSU to a pretty talented Florida squad, Alex Fudge is definitely an NBA-level athlete and wing defender. At 6'9", he's got the size, length, and foot speed to be stifling on that end, and if we can see some progress from him as a shooter and just an overall offensive player, I think we have an easy top 40 guy in there, so I'll be watching him pretty closely this season. Now we're coming up on a group of guards I think are super talented and should be some of the best in college, starting with Caleb Love. He returns as a solid second round prospect. If he can continue to shoot the ball like he did last year from deep, convert on more of his drives and, and improve his decision making, he'll be someone you're confident in long term providing a scoring punch on and off the ball for a team. Tyrese Hunter was one of those guys who stood out on the court far more than the stat sheet could show. Transferring from Iowa State to Texas, he should continue to be a defensive menace, a high-level athlete, and playmaker for the Longhorns. And if the three-point shot can come along, he'll inevitably get a lot of NBA attention. Hunter, Hunter on a run out, look out! 
The Big 12 preseason player of the year is TCU's Mike Miles, and rightfully so. I think I might have mentioned this on the last one of these we did, but it seems impossible that he just turned 20 in late August. His efficiency was down in a different role as a sophomore, but he definitely improved in my opinion last year, and the stage is set for him to really put it all together and be one of the nation's best as a big time shot maker and fairly well-rounded guard. Houston's Marcus Sasser looked like one of the best guards in the country before going down with a season ending injury. He's another one of those guys who really impressed me during the combine runs. Even though he's not the biggest in stature, he's a big time shot creator. He fights defensively, especially on screens. And among the upperclassmen, he's got one of the better cases of getting into that top 40, top 45 type of range. Syracuse head coach Jim Beheim has had nothing but great things to say about freshman guard Judah Mintz. At 6'4", Mintz is a really solid athlete that makes his presence felt as a creator in multiple aspects. And while he's ranked in this spot, I say his ceiling is much higher whether that be as a one or a two year guy. If we're talking sophomore jumps, Jordan Hawkins' name has to come up somewhere in that convo. He's a long 6'5 guard slash wing out of UConn who had plenty of high level moments as a freshman, including giving Auburn 16 in the Battle of Atlantis. He has the tools, it's just about putting it all together, improving the handle, knocking down shots more consistently, but I really like his game heading into the year. Muhammad. Good news for Imani Bates is his felony charges from weeks ago are set to be dropped after a negotiated plea agreement. He's returning to practice and school soon and hopefully this will be just an isolated incident for him. You guys know Imani's super talented offensively and now reported 6'9". And I'm really just curious to see how he looks this year for them. I still have some concerns about him long term just being in a situation where everything isn't built around him. But I've got the slate wiped clean coming into this year for the most part. I still think he has first round talent, but I just want to see how he looks this year. One somewhat under the radar freshman I like is Bobby Clintman out at Wake Forest. He's a 6'9 forward who has a really nice feel as a passer. He can shoot it, he's a good athlete, makes a difference defensively as well. I think there's a chance he's maybe more of a two year guy, but I think he'll eventually have a ton of success filling in that same type of role Jake LaRavia had last year and eventually also find his way to the league. Dayton's Deron Holmes is set to have a big sophomore year. The big time athlete and shot blocker was named to preseason first team and all defense in the A-10. Two things that are sure bets to happen health willing. And I think we see him build on what he did as a freshman. The first of several Duke prospects we'll talk about is Kyle Filipowski, a seven foot big man who has a fairly advanced offensive skill set. I guess you could say I'm a little lower on him than the consensus entering the year for some defensive and positional concerns, but he's got the type of talent and movement ability to dispel that and really be in those first round combos. UCLA's Adem Bona is an athletic high motor big man at about 6'10 who should make an immediate impact this season. He was pretty impressive in the U20s this summer making great plays defensively as both a rim protector and on the ball and then finishing plays offensively. I think he has that late first round type of upside and he's a guy that'll inevitably have some head turning highlights in the Pac-12 this year. The list of impact transfers in college basketball has to have Arkansas's Trayvon Brazil's name on it. Coming over from Missouri, he's a super bouncy forward who blocks shots, finishes plays, and might just shoot the three ball even more this season. And even with the attention being on the other talent on that squad, I think he'll stand out and really benefit from what they do best. Oh, Brazil. While a lot of the attention will be placed on Jarris Walker and Marcus Sasser for a good reason, I think Houston's Terrence Arsenal deserves some love heading into the year. He's a 6'7 athletic wing who can fit that 3 and D type of mold very well, and he's already made a big impression on head coach Kelvin Sampson, which I definitely like to hear. He's another one of those who could be a multi-year guy, but I'm willing to bet on him right now. UAB's Eric Gaines is an excellent athlete who brings a lot else to the table as a 6'2 guard who can defend and make plays for others at a pretty high level. I'm curious to see where he's taking his game as a shooter and scorer, but to me, the LSU transfer has sneaky first round type of upside, and he should be a mid-major star. Auburn's Johan Traore should be one of the best power forwards in the SEC, and will likely continue the Tigers' run of forwards in the NBA draft. He was impressive in their trip to Israel, and with that combination of size, rebounding, and potential to stretch the floor, he's yet another guy who I think has the potential to be in that late first round type of range. When your twin is the fourth pick in the draft and had a monstrous breakout season, 
you're going to get a rightful bump in terms of draft attention and that's been there for Iowa's Chris Murray. Now I would be pretty surprised if he does something as spectacular as Keegan did last year considering we watched him play together. But another smooth 6'8 forward who can defend, knock down shots and make a play deserves top 40 consideration and you'll find plenty who like him even higher than this. A guy who a lot of y'all should be familiar with from last year is Stanford's Harrison Ingram and he'll look to build on what was a productive freshman season. At 6'7", he is about as much of a tweener as there is in modern basketball, but he can really play and he makes an impact in multiple areas. I've already gone back and forth just a little bit on Julian Strother entering the season, but of course that's why we play the games. He's got the potential to break out even more this year with Gonzaga and add to his game offensively, hopefully improve navigating screens defensively, but a 6'7 wing who can really shoot it and makes winning plays that fit on basically any team is always going to be valued pretty highly. JJ Starling is surely looking to pick up where Blake Wesley left off and become a second straight first round pick out of Notre Dame. Like Wesley Starling is another talented two guard who's wired to score and can also make plays for others. Notre Dame, the Fighting Irish will need him to be pretty good early to have similar success as they did last year, but he comes in as another late first type of guy. Someone I've gone back and forth on over the last couple years is Amari Bailey. He's a high energy guard at 6'4", headed to UCLA that you've probably seen at Sierra Canyon in the past couple years. I'm specifically curious about his decision making and the shooting, but it could show and prove his way much higher very early in the season. Barcelona's James Naji is well in the conversation for best international prospect outside of Victor Wimbanyama. At about 6'10", he's super explosive, someone who makes a real impact defensively and has a pretty good motor as a utility big. I still got some questions about him offensively, but defensively, he'll be one of the best the class has to offer, and he's already been doing it at a pretty high pro level. I'm not 100% sure what CD Sissoko is at this point, but I'm intrigued by a lot that he does. I think he's got very high defensive potential and that's probably my favorite part of his game. There have been flashes from him playmaking wise in the past and while he didn't have the best showings against the Mets, I think there's more in there and we'll see it this Ignite season, especially as they mold the rotation and rolls around Scoop. Now here's a quick look back at the first half of the board. By getting into the top 30, Kentucky's Chris Livingston is a guy I want to watch a lot. It's hard not to be intrigued by the 6'6 guy who's as physical and athletic as he is, but there are still some questions about his fit on both ends, especially as a wing. I do think he's a much better shooter than he's been given credit to this point, but we will soon see how he looks and in what role for the Wildcats. Mistakenly left out of the first couple 2023 things that we did, Indiana's Jalen Hood Shafino was one of the more impressive players in the NIBC last year playing for Mount Verde. He's a high field guard with a knack for making plays for others in a pretty well-rounded game and if we see the shot come around further, it's going to be trouble for the Big Ten. But Shafino, alley -oop to I think Tennessee has themselves yet another highly regarded prospect in Julian Phillips. Not only because he's an athletic wing we've also seen high level scoring flashes from, it's partially because he's been praised non-stop about his work ethic and dedication since arriving in Rocky Top. He's probably valued in the right spot coming into the year, but if we're four weeks into the season talking about him being in the teens, I would not be shocked. We've already had some kind of unlikely crossovers between prospects, and one of them was Nikola Jurisic going up against the Thompson Twins. And outside of the turnovers, he performed pretty well in that game. Jurisic has a lot to like as a 6'6 to 6'8 guy who can really shoot it and make plays for others in a couple different roles. The consistency hasn't been there just yet. He's had kind of a weird start to this season, but I think we see him get comfortable over the course of the year and prove his worth as at least that 20s to 30s type of pick. A guy I think should have a little more NBA buzz heading into the year is Duke's Tyrese Proctor. He's a 6'5 combo guard with a knack for scoring the ball and the craftiness to match. I think he'll make an immediate impact for them, especially if Derek Whitehead misses any significant time to start the year. And maybe he does end up a two-year guy, but I have a feeling he's going to surprise some people early on. 
Pepperdine's Maxwell Lewis would be my current pick for the best prospect out of the West Coast Conference this year. At 6'7", he's a good shooter. He's athletic. He's shown high upside as a defender as well. To me, he makes too much sense as a complimentary player to not have him at least in the top 40 to start the season. And along with Houston Millet, he should make Pepperdine really competitive. Leonard Miller is one of the more interesting prospects in this class and of the last couple years to me. He's a 6'10", 6'11", lefty wing who's shown off some ridiculous upside growing to this height over the last couple years, but he's certainly a work in progress. While he was a mixed bag against Wimby in the Mets, I did think that he had some really high upside moments on both ends, but around January I think we'll have a really good feel for where Miller's at. To me, Arthur Kaluma is one of the best college returners in this class. At 6'7 with a 6'11 wingspan, Kaluma showed out with Uganda this summer in the FIBA World Cup qualifier, which was an extension of his late season run with the Blue Jays. His combination of athleticism, creation upside, and versatility is intriguing and should help lead Creighton to one of their best seasons in school history. As well, St. John's has not defended the three well all year. Ryan Rupert is the next prospect to watch out of the NBL. He's a 6'7 winger guard playing with the New Zealand Breakers and someone that's making a noticeable impact defensively. Offensively, he's definitely learning on the fly and the shooting is a work in progress, but he's contributing early and often and should be well in the mix this year. To communicate and sometimes you can really. To me, Jet Howard is a real one and done candidate. There aren't a ton of 6'8 freshmen who can shoot it like he can and have some of the potential he does off the dribble. I think he's solid defensively as well and he'll look to play a huge role in getting Michigan back to the top of the Big Ten. Texas's Dylan Mitchell is a super athletic lefty at 6'7", 6'8", and he's garnered a ton of top 7 buzz from different outlets. I can't quite get there. I think there's too many questions about him as a shooter in the role that he plays at the next level, but this is all very much subject to change. But I do like his athleticism, the energy that he brings, and the defensive upside that he has for sure. Another Arkansas Razorback, Jordan Walsh, is a high-level utility wing that'll likely be the X factor for them this season. He's about 6'7", a very good athlete and defender. He can shoot the three and has a knack for making winning plays. I don't know about the creation side of things, but I think that he'll find himself in a lot of good situations playing off of Nick Smith and Anthony Black, and it should be an exciting year for him. Jaquavion Smith is my number one returner in this class and someone I felt would have been a worthy late first round pick in the last draft. At 6'4", he's a terrific pull-up shooter, he's a dynamic athlete and an evolving playmaker. I really want to see how he improves as a finisher, you know, how, much, how far along he's come physically and defensively, but I think best case he has late lottery potential if he puts it all together. And he could just be one of the next dynamic combo guard scores to make it happen in the league. Baba Miller is a 6'11 wing slash forward from Florida State who is yet another unique mover at that size headed to the league. He's shown he can handle it a bit, he can defend multiple positions and even shoot the ball coming off screens. He's got to do it consistently and I think of him as more of a long term bet kind of like Usman Zhang from last year but he's in the perfect college situation for his skill set under Leonard Hamilton and I think that he'll end up standing out. Kansas' Grady Dick has a very high chance of being the best shooter in this draft. He's a 6'8 wing who was the Gatorade National Player of the Year and while shooting is his elite skill in the initial draw, he's also pretty well rounded, he competes defensively, he's a solid passer, he makes the right play in a lot of situations, and is a better athlete than he often gets credit. I'm curious to see how his handle looks and how he asserts himself offensively over the course of the season, but he's got the track record to back up his talent and should be one of the best freshmen in the Big 12 and in the country. What a call by Luke Barnwell. IMG face guarding. They don't allow One of the higher upside prospects in the class is South Carolina's Gigi Jackson. Still just 17 years old, Gigi is a 6'9 forward who's been expanding his game on the perimeter offensively and has stood out defensively and as an athlete in the past. I'd expect we see some growing pains on his behalf throughout the year and there'll be quite a bit of pressure on him to perform for South Carolina. I think he'll show enough to be in the lot of the top 20 convos at the very least, if not being significantly higher. 
Now let's get into the lottery starting with Arkansas's Anthony Black. AB is a big guard at 6'6", 6'7", who can really make plays, he can defend, and is also a pretty good athlete. I do have questions about his shot and how much pressure he can put on a defense as a creator, but he just finds a way to make an impact and he's one of the bigger reasons Arkansas should be at the top of your watch list whether you're there for college basketball or just the NBA prospects. Kyle Ware is in that next tier of bigs outside of Wimby and I expect him to have a very good freshman year at Oregon. He's very agile, he has terrific rim protecting abilities and his combination of upside as a shooter and play finisher puts him in the lottery convo for me. Now, I'll be watching how Oregon sets him up offensively and I also want to see his engagement level and effort defensively and also on the glass, but he should stand out in the Pac-12. If you like guards who can defend, if you like guards who can defend, Kentucky's case and Wallace is going to be your guy. Standing at 6'3", 6'4", with a 6'6", wingspan, Wallace is your two-way guard who can play both on and off the ball. He can knock down threes and is a solid playmaker. Outside of the defense, none of it is truly spectacular, but he has a knack for making winning plays, and I think the SEC will feel his impact all year long. Duke's Derek Lively is another guy who has a very good chance of being the best non-Wimbenyama big in the draft. He already looks better physically, adding to what he brings as a rim protector, a finisher at the rim, and someone who should be able to stretch the floor. He's fairly mobile as well and should be a staple in the lottery throughout the year. Brandon Miller is a 6'9 wing out of Alabama who's poised to have an excellent freshman year. He was big time in their international tour, leading them in scoring and in hustle plays, and he's just got a great deal of potential on both ends of the floor. I want to see how his three-point shot looks, and still being about 200 pounds is notable, especially given that he's a bit older than the other freshmen. They lost by 30, but he had 33 against TCU in a recent scrimmage, if you need another reason to believe in what he brings. Long and athletic. I really like Jarris Walker's baseline of athleticism, physicality, and defensive impact to go with some of the upside he started showing as a ball handler and scorer over the last year or so. He should be a big difference maker for Houston this year, a team that I see being an elite eight contender at worst. And with all of that, I think he's an easy preseason pick here and, and maybe even an eventual climber. Turn the tide from on both Lassar and Amin Thompson now play for the Reapers in Overtime Elite's revamped and partially expanded league. As 6'7", Asar has garnered rightful top 10 attention as a high-level athlete, defender, and connecting playmaker. The shot is a work in progress for sure, but he's performed even in some of the higher levels OTE has played in this summer and should stick fairly high in the draft. If you want more in-depth info on the both of their games, definitely go watch the videos we did a couple months ago. Now the Big 12 preseason freshman of the year is Baylor's Keontae George. At 6'4", George is your classic two guard wired to score and make plays and he's on my short list of favorite players to watch in this class. He showed some good stuff defensively this summer, he's worked on his body already, slimmed down a little. While a lot of things will probably have to go his way, I do think top 5 is within the realm of possibilities for someone as talented as he is. Duke's Derek Whitehead has surgery on a fractured right foot in late August and is reportedly supposed to be back sometime in the fall, so hopefully it'll be as soon as possible. Getting into the basics of his game, he's an athletic wing at 6'6 who is really composed and has high level potential as a shooter, and especially on one or two dribble pull-ups. He's also intrigued me as a secondary playmaker as well. I'm curious to see how he looks as a driver in getting downhill and just how the injury kind of works into all of this. but. I still like him as a safe bet in the top 10 range. At number 5 we've got another guy who will miss some time to start the year and that is Villanova's Cam Whitmore. He recently suffered a broken thumb that will require surgery and keep him out at least until he's reevaluated in early November. He's a super athletic and physical wing at 6'7 who has a ton of upside as a slasher, defender, and an overall scorer. Shooting is a big swing skill for him and the thumb injury kind of throws an unfortunate wrinkle into that but again he should have a very good year in the Big East and hopefully it doesn't affect him too much. Coming in at the 4 spot we have Nick Smith Jr. I think he has a good chance of becoming the best scorer and maybe best overall creator in this class. He's someone who can get to it from all 3 levels, he's got a nice floater game and he feels like he's just always aggressive. If I had to bet, especially with some of the injuries right now, I'd bet on Nick being the first college player off the board. But at the very worst, I'd expect he'd be second or third. And I think the Razorbacks are going to love him over these next six months. 
Amin Thompson comes in at number three for me. He's been on a very, very good run even before starting play with Overtime Elites League once again. He's just an alien level athlete, a special playmaker, and has the potential to be high impact defensively. Like his brother, the shot is still very much a work in progress, but I do like the willingness that he's shown in these first couple games and he's knocked down a few of them. And honestly, I just think everything else that he brings to the table and the upside that he has, especially if you're confident in your player development staff, it's too high not to have him up here, at least in this top five range. Scoot Henderson was spectacular in his one full game against Victor Wembanyama in Metropolitan's 92 before bumping knees and sitting out in game two. You guys are probably a lot more familiar with his game than other players entering a year, but he's a big time athlete with a deadly mid-range game. He puts a whole lot of pressure on the defense and is an excellent playmaker who also showed signs of improvement from three. He got the dub in one of the greatest prospect matchups ever, and he'd be number one in a lot of years. Unfortunately, the guy in front of him would be number one in pretty much all of them. And that's Victor Wembanyama. And Wimby put on an absolute show in the two exhibitions against the Ignite. And since then, he's been playing really well in Pro A. I think he's progressing really well. He looks great in this new role, and it's all happening a little faster than I even thought. This could sound crazy, but you could make an argument that he has the highest pre-draft ceiling of anyone to ever pick up a ball, and he's got the mentality and work ethic to match that unbelievable talent. You guys know I'm not the type to jump out the window on too many prospects, but Wimby is absolutely special. He's generational and will be the root of all tanking that we expect to see in the second half of the season. Now here's a quick recap of the entire board. I gotta say it again, it's far too early to take much substantial from the rankings of players in the preseason, but it's just kind of a rough look at how I see things now. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you are new, and comment down below some of your thoughts on your favorite players, um, who you're excited to watch, you know, things of that nature. But yeah, that's all I've got. I appreciate y'all for watching. As always, I'm Keandre. This is Hoop Intellect. Until next time, I'm out. They don't really love you like they say they do, yeah For your spending and your energy, they using you Got my own friends, hey.